Hey C3 SYD youth, welcome. Hey C3 SYD youth, welcome to season two. Episode two, get ready. It's gonna be good. Coming up this week on C3 SYD Youth's online experience, Jesse Ditchfield hosts our new segment, On The Spot. C3 SYD Youth worship with The Blessing. Later, Pastor Alex Lee has some heart-to-heart -heart chats with some Connect Group leaders. And of course, heart laughs, try not to laugh. But for now, please welcome your hosts, Tyler and Jesse. Welcome back to C3 SYD Youth Online. And it's episode two. And oh, episode yes. one, the season launch. Oh, oh my. We're getting high. We got some big stakes to, to meet. Some big marks. So high. Cool. I mean, I feel the pressure to meet this height. Yeah. So, oh what goodness. have we got coming up? What have we got coming up? Oh, wait. I mean, just this episode we right have here. on the spots. What's that about? Oh. Ha. <laughs> I mean, there's going to be some people who are going to be looking a little red faced as they get a camera a little awkward. in their face and they get some questions that they might not want to answer. So we're just shoving cameras down their face. See if they, so what, they, what they have to say. Um, we've got yeah. some heart laughs. Yeah. Uh, we've got an interview tonight Ooh, with I love our, it. three of our three team, of our best team members. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Cannot wait for it. So get yourself ready. We're about to head into some worship. Let's do so it. So we're going to throw to the worship team. Take it away. Hi, everyone. We believe in worship, wherever you are, in your homes. Let's just open up our hearts to God tonight. We believe He is with you. We believe you can feel His presence. He loves you so much. And we're just gonna engage in His presence tonight. Let's just open our hearts to Him. Yeah. 
C3SYD Youth, how good was that worship? We love our worship team. I can hear you singing all the way from here. But I am going to encourage us in our tithes and offerings tonight. So if you're ready to give, um, I'm ready to encourage you. So why don't you take what you've got to give tonight? Um, but when you love someone or something, you know you're willing to give your time, your energy, your money and yourself to that person or thing. You know, it's a fact that love gives. And you know, in John 3, 16, it says, For God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son, so that whoever believes in Him 
shall not perish, but have eternal life. God gave his only son. Why? Because he loves us. And that love meant he had to do something. You know, he had it all in heaven, yet he gave it up for us. He made himself poor so that we could be rich. He gave his life so that we could be called sons and daughters of the Most High God. Did he have to? No. It was all out of love. Love requires an action. In the same way, you give someone a gift because that um, you're not, they're not expecting it. They're not, um, you're not obliged to give it to them, but you give it to them because you love them. It is the natural response when you love someone to give them something. And as children of God today, let's follow God's example. Let's give. Let's give not because we have to, but because we want to, because we want to be generous. And I encourage you today to trust God. Trust God with your finances. Trust Him with your whole life and just watch what He will do. Live to bless others and you will not regret living a generous life. You know, I'm constantly amazed at the goodness of God and what God does um, in my life and the blessings that He pours and the love that He pours into my life. And you may think you have something um, only small to give tonight and that's okay. You may think you have nothing to give, but trust me, you do. Bring what you have into His house and it will be blessed. Start living a generous life and I can tell you, once you do, you won't stop living a generous life. But hey, I hope that encouraged you tonight. Um, if you're giving tonight, there's a QR code coming up on the screen and the links below to give. Um, and let's throw to Heart Laughs. Oh, you pressed up. These kids acting like they're pulling a rope across the street. Look at it, they, they, they stop the call, guys. Stop, because they think they're pulling a rope across the street. <laughs> yeah, he had to get out and look. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Clay wants to battle you. Oh, both got, both got taken out. I feel bad. Oh, he killed both. I feel bad. It's Clay. You're just playing. You're just playing. You're just playing. <laughs> Can you tell me about your chocolate on your face? What happened? Um, a dot. One manure dot on my face and I washed it. Did you wash it with chocolate? Yep. Okay, so we've loaded the first stage of the pump with muck. And now I'm going to pressurize the stage and we should see the muck come out of the valve at the end. It's very simple. Here we go. Kitty cat ready to do battle. Kitty cat, how are you? There you are. Coming down here. Oh! <laughs> Whoops. <coughs> he got my glove. <laughs>
a British accent. <laughs> oh, very funny! <laughs> Okay, so, fun little segment. I'm going to be interviewing today a few of our Connect Group leaders, some of our team. Shout them out in the comments, who's your Connect Group leader? And I'm going to be asking them some really awkward, on-the-spot questions and just seeing how they react. So, now, P.S., we love our Connect Group leaders. They, um, they do so much, and we're so thankful for all they do. But um, sometimes, you just got to ask the real questions. <music> How you doing? Good, how are you? Can I ask you a few questions? Yeah. Just right, right here, right now? Yeah, what if I said no though, what would you do? Um, I'd just still film you. Oh, okay. Can I ask you a few questions? Sure. Hey. Can I ask you some questions? Sure. Hey mate, how are you? Good, I've, I've just got you for a quick second here. Yeah, yeah. Do you mind if I ask you a few things? Yeah, I have to be so close. Emily and Maisie. <laughs> it's really intrusive. Why is it so close? No, it's not that close. <clears throat> yes. um, can you just explain your names, what your names are? Uh, so I'm Ben. I'm uh, Michelle. Cool. And do you just want to move a little bit more apart there? Thanks. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, good. Leave me for the Holy Spirit. <laughs> You're married to our amazing youth pastor, Alex Lee. Yes. What's the best thing about being married to him? Ooh, um, he gives really good massages. Yeah? Yeah, it's pretty good. And who are you married to? I am married to Brittany Louise Klingleffer. Wait, what was that? <laughs> Brittany Louise Klingler So did you really marry her or did you not marry her? Uh, how good are your looks out of 10? How would you rate yourself? Oh gosh. Um, out of 10, how would you rate your looks? Oh wow. Um, well I have different days, you know. What's a good day? A good day is like a good like eight. A bad day is like a good two. Looks out of 10. My looks. What would you give yourself? Ah, oh, do I? How good looking do you think you are? Give it, a, give it a solid six. Yeah? Yeah. So is that like some low esteem or do you think really you're better than that? I mean, I have my Junos, so like, you know, <laughs> it's, it's a bit of a bit of a difficulty. Yeah. How would you rate your looks out of 10, Maisie? Okay. <laughs> um, I would ask Emily the question. No! <laughs> what would you rate your looks out of 10, Emily? Um... Like, I'm a child of God, I'm his creation, I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Um, so, do I like this question? <laughs> do I? Natalie Clark runs the C3SYD worship team. Yep. Uh, you guys have got the same last name. Are you married? Uh, no, and we're not cousins either, or brothers and sisters. Well, not brothers, obviously, she's a girl. Yeah. <laughs> so, do you think you're pretty good at, uh, on the production team? I think I work relatively well inside the uh, youth infrastructure. So, um, are you guys a couple? Uh, well, I mean, when we want to be. By definition, yes. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Would you say you're the best sound mixer for all C3 SYD youth? No. <laughs> I don't know. We've got some pretty good guys working for us, so. You're so humble. And so who's um, the better person in the relationship? <gasps> oh, that's cute. And you're in the C3 SYD worship team, right? I am. And who runs that? The West Worship? Uh, no, just SYD. Oh, Nat Clark. Oh, nice. Yeah. Do you think she's, she's, she's a good singer? For sure. Do you reckon she thinks you're a good singer? I, I hope so. What's the best thing about being married? Uh, best thing about being married is having a companion to do life with. Really? Like, what's the best thing about being married? Uh, it's it's um, learning and growing and maturing and becoming a better person alongside someone else. Um, it's just such an amazing... What's something you look really stupid doing? You kind of look a bit stupid Everything. Um... <laughs> I've heard... Um, since being on um, the worship team and stuff, you've come across a bit of a bit of an illness. Yep. Is it true that you've got epilepsy? Yep, epilepsy, EPC. Uh, Jackson Pierce used to have it, but he transferred it to me. So, uh, yep. Are you, are you angry at him? Uh, I cry about it most nights, um, but, sorry. So you think that Emily's way better on camera than you? Definitely. Oh. You know who was way better? Pastor Chris. Yes. Oh yeah. We got a surprise Star. visit from Pastor Chris, so we just threw her on camera, and she was a natural. 
So what's your favourite song you've written for C3 Youth Worship? I actually haven't written any. Oh. Yeah. Well, do you scrunch or fold your toilet paper? <laughs> scrunch, of course. Okay, I actually don't get this question because, like, when you're wiping your butt, is that what it means? <laughs> is that what it means? Yeah. Well, fold. Do you scrunch or fold your toilet paper? Uh, fold all the way, every day. I definitely fold. I fold. I uh, definitely fold. I'm not. A, I'm not primitive. Do you girls scrunch or fold your toilet paper? Oh, that's a very personal. Oh, I fold. thought about this. When <laughs> fold, I Emily. Absolutely. I am such a folder. Wow. Yeah. What if I told you Pastor Jessen was a scruncher? I don't believe it. What do you <laughs> she's not a scruncher at all. Jessen is too like put together. Yeah. Like, I feel like she's a folder. Us put together people fold. Not so you are you saying <laughs> Pastor Jessen is not put together? No, I would like to know for a fact if she does fall. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, so do you see yourself getting married one day? Yeah, definitely, why not? Uh, how much money would you spend on like an engagement ring? I don't know, lots. What's I've lots? heard that it's like at least like, it like six months salary or something. Six months wages or something. I don't know, it depends on how much you earn. How much is six months? <laughs> I'm not telling you about my financial earnings. <laughs> And obviously, if you're married to Brittany, yeah. you would have proposed to her, right? Yeah. How much money did you spend on the engagement ring? Oh, mm, a lot. Can you give us a number? Um, more than I spend on a lot of things. Cool. So you're just avoiding it. That's cool. Would you uh, ever pee in a pool? Pee in a pool? Or have you ever <laughs> peed in a pool? Yeah, when I was like five. Yeah. Not recently. Is there a reason you're so close? Is one of you a, um, a better kisser? Uh, is, is... Who's your celebrity crush? Um, at the moment, it's Jared Padalecki. Yeah, who's he? Yeah. Uh, he's in Supernatural. And what do you like about him? Everything. <laughs> <laughs> well, hope you go have fun in the worship team. Thanks, man. Yeah, don't, yeah. Get, don't get a fit. Who do you prefer, Pastor Al or Jess? Uh, I've got to say Pastor Jess. Do you pee in the shower? Yep. Would you rather be caught picking a wedgie or picking your nose? Um, picking a wedgie, hygiene. Have you ever eaten booger? Yep. Uh, did you have a crush before Eloise? Uh, yeah, I had a crush on Eloise before Eloise, so. But anyone before that? Nah. She was actually my first girlfriend. Who's the better kisser out of you and Eloise? I think um, she'd say she's better and I'd say I'm better, but I think I'm better. Does one of you have more experience? Um, nah. <laughs> well, you can ask Eloise that. <laughs> What's one of your most awkward moments? Well, when I probably spilt a whole uh, glass of red wine on Eloise's dress uh, when we weren't even dating. How much did you spend on her engagement ring? <laughs> um, <laughs> some money. <laughs> so you're just avoiding it, that's cool. Oh my goodness. Yo. Those on the spots were like, <laughs> Yo. some of them got me like, oh, squeamish, like squeamish. <laughs> how could you say that? Well, how could you not say that? How could you admit that? <laughs> Seriously. I'd be like, on the spot, ask my mom. I don't know. Like, hey, we love oh. all our youth leaders. We, we are, we them. cherish we them. them, love them. But we Bit love our locations. Even yes. More. Yes, we oh. love Zach Pearson at C3 Avalon. Uh, how you going? Yes. We've got Runga. Jeremy from Penrith. Jeremy from Back Penrith. Back to Arunga, we got Michelle yes. and her whole crew. Oh my goodness. Uh, Shout out to Roselle. Shout out to Ox. Ox. Oh, we love the Ox. Come on. Ox rep. If you're in the Ox, if you're in any location, spam it Type in the it chat. Up. Spam, Where, whatever location spam. you're from. Just finger mash. Don't don't even look what you're talking about. Or if you're from anywhere else around the, <laughs> around Australia, around the world, yep. put that in the in the comments yep. too. We want to hear if you're yep. overseas or somewhere yeah. tuning in. Shout out Brazil. I don't know. Any Brazilians? Any Brazilians out there? If you're there, we let love us you. Know. We love you too. <laughs> 
Well, and Jess, yes. we have something really fun coming up right now. Come we on. thought, let's do something a little Come different. On. Come on. And so we're not just going to do a preach tonight. We're going to do an interview. Come on. Hey. And so we have our pastor, Pastor Alex, so he's going to be hosting yes. the interview. But we've got three of our best. We've got Brayden, we've got Emily, and we've got Jackson. And so why don't we throw to them right now? Take it away. Well, hey, everybody. Welcome to Season 2, Episode Two, and uh, it's so good to be here. King of Hearts, we're talking about. And tonight we're doing something different. We're doing something special. We're going to be interviewing three different people about our topic this week, Treat Yourself. So get ready. The interviews are coming your way. Well, guys, like I said, we are doing some interviews tonight, and we have Braden Klingleffer. Hello. Hello, sir. We are doing an interview with him. Our first, we're doing three. We're doing three tonight, but stress. you're the first. Yeah. How are you feeling? I'm feeling good. You I'm look well. Good. Thank you. You look healthy. Oh, I hope so. Yeah, you look strong. I hope I've been, you know, staying healthy during isolation. <laughs> you, well, that's right. What, what's been your number one activity in isolation? I've done so many more walks than usual. Walking. I usually like, I usually find walks a bit, you know. Yeah, come on. Who loves walking? Yep. Holler at your boy. Nice. You, you're the walker. You're the, the I king, am now. king I am of now. walking. I try to be. Speaking of kings, king yep. of hearts. Yep. Season two. Term theme. Episode two. Hello. Tell us about how do you look after your heart? Because tonight we're talking about treat yeah. yourself. Yeah. Treat yourself. Treat yourself. So so how do you treat your heart? How do you look after the, the state of your heart? How do you look after the state of your heart? There's Tell so us. much that you could go into with this question. Yeah. Uh, I think when you're looking at, you know, looking after the state of your heart, I think there's like, it's almost a bit like an onion. You can see it with oh, different layers. Oh, I hate layers. onions. And like, I know. I know, especially when you have to eat them raw. Oh, terrible. Not fun. Yeah, not good. But you can kind of see it a bit like um, an onion in ways. Like it's got layers and sometimes there are things that are just on the surface that you just can like brush off a little bit. But sometimes there's issues or there's there's things um, going on in our hearts that are maybe a bit deeper than that and might need a bit more work. So uh, I think it's important to, when you're looking at, you know, how do I take care of my heart? Yeah. It's important to kind of... I guess, assess and take time to assess. Um, I think it's actually guarding your heart looks a lot more like a process. Yes. And treating your heart well looks more like a process rather than just, you know, putting up walls to, to you know, someone hurt me. I'm just going to block them out, you know, block all the haters. Yeah, yeah. Now, actually, like, how can we process through what's going on in our heart right. and still include people, still love people, still invite them into our life and still love on them? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, and that's that's the scripture. Proverbs four twenty three says, yeah. "Guard your heart with all diligence, yeah. for out of it will flow Absolutely. the issues of your life." So yeah. the issues yeah. are connected to the state yeah. of your heart. True. And I love what you said about guarding. The guarding is not to be guarded. Yeah, it's actually the word means garrison. Yeah, which is like soldiers at the door of a of a palace. Yeah, or bouncers at the door of a party. Yeah. So how do you? Um, look after what comes in your heart yeah. and what you don't let in your heart? Oh, um, I think your thought life comes right. into it in a big way. Um, and, you know, it's not just to say, you know, it's just a simple fix, like l l look after what you think about. And, yeah, and so you've you got to actually go, like, to to the source and to the root, which which in many cases I think is our thought life. And, you know, that's why it's so important to be diligent and actually be aware of, you know, what's going on in your mind yes. and what's going on in your thought life because from that flows so much. It flows so much. And so give us really quickly top tip in giving that to God. How do you, how do you pray when mm. you're dealing with something in your heart? Yeah, um, it's a big one. It's something, something that I've journeyed through and that I feel like I've learned in my life is sometimes it's not just a, you know, take it to God and, you know, it'll magically go away. Sometimes it's actually a journey and a process because I believe that God wants to actually do a work in our heart and do something, you know, on a deep level. Um, and, and sometimes that does take, that means that God does take us on a journey. Uh, and so, um, yeah, I think it's just important that we, we understand. And this was a journey that I still go on often is when I'm going to spend time with the Lord and when I'm going to, to, when I'm giving something to Him, when I'm giving an issue over to God and casting my cares on Him, um, that it actually looks like spending time with God. Yes. Actually spending time with, with God who is um, deeply concerned about you. Right. Who deeply cares for you. 
and and is is wants relationship with you. Yes. That is the gospel that God wants relationship with us, and so He made a way for that to happen. And so I think that if we can just find in our time with God mm, to actually time. just spend time soaking in His presence. Being with him, it's Christianity isn't about like this checklist. Like you gotta, you gotta do this. You gotta do this. You gotta do this. It's about a relationship with a God who loves you. I love it. I love it. Hey, everybody, Braden Klingleffer on Treat Yourself. Get ready for our next guest. So we're here with our second very, very special guest, Emily Ancliffe. Emily, how are you? I'm great. How are you? You, you are great. <laughs> what, what are you? What is your top tip? Just tell me straight mm-hmm. away, isolation life, what's been helping you get through? TikTok. Oh, yes. And ice cream in a cup. Uh, in a bowl, she means. Don't fight me. She means <laughs> She means a bowl. But you you and Tyler, like, are great TikTokers. We're getting there. Really impressive. So make sure you follow us. Where our goal of Tune isolation in. is to be TikTok famous. Yeah, seriously. Yep. They're amazing. I'm jealous. <laughs> um, but tell me, mm. treat yourself. Yes. Other than TikTok, mm-hmm. which is one way. <laughs> But another way, tell me about, um, you know, when, you, when we're looking at our heart, guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it flow the issues of your life, Proverbs 4.23, dealing with the state of your heart. Sometimes mm. it can be hard to see how your heart really is. Yeah. How, how, do, how do you do that? How do you get perspective on the state of your heart? Yeah. I think when you're looking at the state of your heart, the further you zoom out, the more you're going to see. So, you know, when you Google something in maps and it pins you right there, but if you pinch it, you zoom out a bit further and further and you get more context. You're like, oh, it's that far away. Like, oh, I have to drive (laughs) there. (laughs) And I feel it's the same with our hearts. When we're in a situation, sometimes we can be a little bit too much in that situation. And so we're too overwhelmed by what's happening right there and then. But if we just can take ourselves out a little bit further, zoom ourselves out, take that other perspective and we go you know what that actually wasn't such a big deal I can I can get over that I can move on didn't kill me I'm fine I'm stronger for it or it might be getting over an offense or something like that you can say you know what I don't think that person actually meant it that way and I'm going to move on from this so I feel like the further we actually step back the more we can see and deal with the issues of the heart so would that be um practically when you're stepping back Mm. like what does that look like for you do you take some time out Mm. do you go and pray do you talk to a friend what what does that look like for you practically well I ask for God's perspective because he's got the biggest perspective right it's like he's got the bird's eye view of everything so I say God can you just show me what really is this situation that I'm in show me what you want me to see what you want me to learn from this And I give it to him in prayer. I say, God, I'm feeling too caught up in this or I'm feeling too overwhelmed in this. God, I give it to you and I pray that you could give me your perspective on this. So flipping good. Now, uh, you mentioned offense. And that, that's a real thing. Like, and a lot of us can face offense. Maybe it's something somebody said. Maybe it's life. Maybe it's the coronavirus. You're just offended by it. I don't know. What, whatever it is. But offense can get into our world. And so what's, what's the key? How do, we, how do we deal with hurt or offense that gets lodged yeah. in our heart? The key is forgiveness. Think? Yeah, right. <laughs> and I feel that when you think of a heart, when you're feeling a bit of resentment towards someone and unforgiveness, it's like that little bit of your heart goes rusty and it goes like right. a hard metal and that's not how it's supposed to be. And right. so for me, if I'm sort of, you can actually feel that like hardening of your heart towards someone or a situation. And so when you pray for forgiveness for that person, for you to be able to forgive them, I feel like it's just a letting go where that rusty shield just drops off Amazing. and you're able to let that go. And part of that is praying to God and saying, Lord, help me forgive them. I forgive them and I ask you to help me move on from this. And I feel like the best thing you can do is then pray for that person. Right. Because it's really hard to be offended at a person you're praying for. (laughs) So true. (laughs) So you say, God, I bless them. I pray that you would help them in their situation, whatever's going on in their world. Yes. God, I move on from this and I give them full forgiveness because you first forgave me and bring it back to the cross. That is amazing. And it's incredible, like you're saying, um, you, th- you think forgiveness is for the other person, and it kind of is, but the person that helps the most is you. Totally. It sets you free. Yeah. And forgiving ourselves is huge. I feel like we're right. our worst critics. So yes. to be able to practice forgiving yourself and moving on from things and and going back to the perspective, saying, God, I ask for your perspective on this situation. I forgive myself and I thank you that it's 
for you that I am forgiven. Amazing. Yeah. Hey, wherever you're watching from, stand up and clap your hands. Amazing, Emily. Forgiveness, perspective, all about looking after the state of your heart. Em, you're the best. Stay tuned for our third and final guest. Well, guys, we've had two interviews thus far. We're up to number three, and look who it is. Oh. It's, it it's Jackson Pierce. I should be interviewing you. No, you should. No you way. should be no, quiet and no, listen no, to me. Because I want to ask you. I want to ask you. Okay. You you um you have a great moustache. Oh, hello. He has a great moustache. We'll take that. He's had a haircut. Ah, see, so no he's more looking great. Maletta. And <laughs> something I know that Jackson Pierce does it's to true. get through isolation yep. is, is spear fishing. Oh, it's true. Tell us about it. I uh, I you know what um I'm still a fisher of man, but the fisher <laughs> of fish. It's good, wow. you know, taking um, beautiful snorkeling into the ocean and um, taking God's creation home with me. That's how wow. I look at it. Yeah, he's a beautiful, isn't it? New age guy. What can I say? He's a, oh, he's a you're just, a snack. No, um, <laughs> and and so like one other ISO tip. One other ISO tip. Or oh, other ISO tip. Um, I've been making sourdough. Yeah. That's really good. Love sourdough. I've noticed. Um, completely bombed it. Wow. A few times. It's just like. Water and flour in the oven doesn't taste that, good. Nah, it sucks. Um, I would say, oh, learn something new. I reckon. Right. You know. You know. Use use the time. You know all the excuses that we always used to use. Man, if I had more time, I'd do this. And now we've got all this time. Still not doing it. Still not doing it. <laughs> Get to Seriously. it, man. Oh, learn Italian. Story of my life. Something. Learn to speak good English. Or yeah. yeah. <laughs> good England. <laughs> um, Jackson. Yes. So our heart. Yeah. Treat yourself, yeah, yeah. looking after the state of your uh -huh. heart. Uh -huh. Talk to me about, now, it's one thing to um, manage what's coming into our heart. Yes. But what about the other side of it? Yeah. What's coming out of our heart? Yeah, that's great. What does that look like for you? Yeah, I think um, that's cool, like what comes in, because sometimes you can't control what comes in. Sure. People say things, people, you know, and so you've got to guard what comes out. Yeah, right. So looking at that and realizing, you know, my identity in Christ, first, because then that won't let um, certain things shake me. Right. Um, you know, so stuff that happens at work or um, no work or anything like that. Yes. Yeah. My reaction to that shows my heart. Amazing. So for that, it's just kind of knowing my identity in God and what what are the wins, what so matters. Good. Right. Yeah. What's really important, and um, Jesus said, uh, out of the overflow of the heart. Yeah. The mouth speaks. Yeah. So how have you, when you're wanting to, you know, something happens yeah. and it kind of gets you like fired up yeah. and you're like ready to kind of fly off the handle oh, a little, yeah. Yeah. how do you manage your response oh. when you're feeling that? Um, this has taken me a few years. Um, There's a few a few weeks ago, um, I made coffee at home, put it in the fridge, like a little cold brew thing. And I, my roommate yelled out from my room, it's like, Jackson, Jackson. And I was like, oh. Yeah, I was like, come out. And then he'd open the fridge. And as he opened the fridge, he'd flung it out. And my coffee was all over the floor. And I, I made him clean it up, first of all. Yeah, but um, absolutely. I came out and I yeah. thought, and my first thought was, oh, no, I've lost all my coffee. I'm all, you know, it was <laughs> my next day's all the coffee. But then I just thought, well, you know what? It doesn't really matter in the end. It doesn't change my identity. Obviously, that was not my first thought was not, oh, my identity is safe. But it was like, what's the big deal? But then looking at that and then in bigger situations going away and, and thinking, okay, you know, I might react a bit initially, mm. but then going, okay, did I handle that well? Right. And what is that? But then looking at that and going, well, what is the big, the big reason? What, yes. are the, what are the big things? Yeah, right. Mm. What are the big things? So not sweating over small no. things? No, not sweating over small things. Making a big deal of... Small yeah. things? No. Yeah, that easy to do. Yes. Easy to do because there's so many more small things. Right. There are so many small, uh, small th the things that are little yeah. that really do dominate our attention yeah. and mind. Because there's so many of there's them so many in your head. They're hitting all you, in there. Hitting me all Don't the time. Don't touch me. Social distance. Oh. Um, you, you then said about big things. What do you think are some of the big things in life um, that really matter? I think, funnily enough, I think they're the three big things for our church. Right. So it's Jesus. Come on. Community. And purpose. Amazing. And purpose being maybe work, or for me at the moment, that's college, at C3 College, a little plug. Hello. Um, Principal Pam would be proud of me for that one. She will. And um, so those watching. things, so being in community, um, talking to mentors, leaders, other people, you know, pouring out. But my time with Jesus, the time of spending with the Holy Spirit, um, they're, the, they're the big things. So they're the things that I would sweat. Right. Depending on 
how that looks each day. I would I wouldn't sweat how it looks, but I would sweat how I do it. Right. So you know, sometimes I've slept in in the morning and miss you know reading my Bible or miss praying, but the Holy Spirit's there. And so I woke up and I go, hey, I uh, I slept in. Um, all good. You know, sorry about that. I, I wanted to read the Bible this morning. <laughs> Did it? <laughs> A little bit of sweat because I was like, oh, that's my time with God. Yeah. But then going, you know what? It's another day. Yes. I'm not going to miss tomorrow. Right. Yeah. Miss today, but I'm not going to miss never, tomorrow. Never the two days in a row. Come on. Sometimes, maybe one time, but never don't two days in two. a row. Might miss one, but don't miss two. Yeah. People, it's Jackson Pierce. We love you to bits, bro. Hey, thanks for having Thank me. Thank you for Al. your time. You're the man. You're the man. No, you're the man. Hey, this is our last interview. Stay Ooh. tuned for what's Ooh. next. Well, how good to hear from three different people, Brayden, Emily, and Jackson. And at the end of the day, you know what really matters in our world, in our life? There's a lot of things we can't control. There's a lot of things that we don't have a say in. But one thing we do have a say in is the state of our heart and who's king of our heart. And you got to know that something will rule your heart. Something will rule your life. But you were not made to be ruled by things of this world. You were made to be ruled by a king. His name is Jesus. And his kingship is not to dominate you, not to boss you around, not to bully your life. His lordship in your world is to bring you to still waters, to green pastures, to guide your footsteps and to lead you into eternal life. That is the purpose and the heart of God for you. And right now you might be listening to this and you know that God is not the king of your heart. This is your moment right now to make Jesus Lord. You've got a lot of other things that you've allowed to rule in your life. Why don't you try Jesus? Why don't you try God? You, you've got all sorts of things. And you know, relationships, when they rule your life, they'll leave you confused at times. But God is true. God is faithful. God is consistent. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And you need Him in your heart. So right now, take a moment, close your eyes, maybe bow your head, just shut off distraction turn off any other devices, put away the snacks and listen to me. If you need to make Jesus Lord of your life, you need to invite him into your heart. This moment is for you right now. So I'm going to count to three. And once I've counted to three, I want you to raise your hand. I know no one's looking. I can't see you, but do it as a response to God. Just saying, yes, Lord, I, I invite you in. So I'll count to three. And then I want you to raise your hand. So here we go. One, two, three. That's good. Yeah, raise, raise your hand. That's right. Say yes to God. Say yes to the greatest king, the king of all kings, Jesus. He loves you and he's calling you. Just have one more moment. If you need, if you're battling, you're wrestling, give in to God. Don't, don't turn to other things in this season. Turn to Jesus. Amen. Hey, if you raise your hand and you're saying in your heart, yes to God, I want to lead you in this prayer. So I'm going to give you the words and then I just want you to say them after me. We'll, we'll say it together. So here it is. Say this. Say, dear Lord Jesus, I invite you into my heart. I turn from my sin. I turn from old things. I turn from every other thing other than you. And here tonight, I make you king of my heart. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, if you prayed that prayer, we believe you just got born again. You just received Christ and made him Lord of your life. That is the best thing that could ever happen. Make sure you let us know because we want to help you. It's a journey following Jesus. And so we want to help you on that journey. Put it in the live chat. Chat to somebody. Text your connect group leader. Let them know. Let your friend know. And we just want to help you and pray with you. We hope you've enjoyed episode two of season two, King of Hearts. Stay tuned for more and we'll see you soon. 
Wow. Oh Some fire wisdom Those coming interviews. at you. Oh my coming gosh. Coming at you. Hey, they were so good. Amazing. Past the hour with yeah. our three trio interviews. Name a more dynamic d- trio. Trio. Not duo. Trio. I know. They were so good. I, we got so much out of that. Yeah. I know it definitely... Uh, you can get some stuff out of yep. that. So oh even go back and watch it again. And yeah, watch yeah. it again. Yep. And, then and, and again. And then again. And again. And, and again. one more time. <laughs> and we want to connect with you. Yes. So maybe uh, in that moment where Pastor Al had the opportunity for you to respond to Jesus, yep. if that was you, what you can do right now is below in the bio is a link to connect with us. Yep. And so if you, wanted to, if you said yes to Jesus, hit up that link. Down if below. you just wanted to get more connected, hey. maybe you want to join a connect group. Hook you up with a leader. Same place. Hit that link up and we can get you in one of our Zoom connect groups uh, mid, you know, COVID-19. Yes. But then otherwise, Jess. That wraps up episode. Oh my gosh. Episode two, season two. We um can't wait to see you next week again yep. and all on the gram yep. this coming week. So yep. Yep. we love yep. you so much. Uh, see you soon. See you there. Hi guys, we're from Avalon. Shout out to the Avalon crew. Shout out to you guys. How good was that service? So good. I reckon you guys should like and subscribe. Because we'll be back next week and we'll see you there. See you there.